I'm deeply concerned about the people in Roosevelt Heights. I have been ever since I've been a councilman. I've requested repeatedly uh, that the council members do something to solve the problem concerning the sewers. We work to get waters, we work to pave the streets, we work to get street lights, we work to get a city park, many other things, and those things have been accomplished since I've been on the council. But I've spent more time on this one single project concerning the construction of levees for the Roosevelt Heights area than any other thing I've done since I've been a member of the city council. I really don't know how to express how I feel. I'm sad that he doesn't know anything about our child. And I'm angry because I, I think that the families are being used by the North Vietnamese as well as the men. And I think people expect me to be happy and I am happy to have heard from him, but I'm not, I'm not happy to know that he hasn't received any of my letters, nor has received any of the packages, but he's not well. His handwriting looks very weak, and I'm just, I'm so worried. It's, it's just kind of hard to explain the, the, the worry that I'm experiencing right now. come a long way from a cornfield airstrip in the 1920s, and the Dallas downtown skyline has kept pace with that change. But while the Dallas civic leaders who view the ever-rising skyline of their city with increasing pride, the pilots who fly in and out of Law Field take a different view. They look on the skyline as something of a man-made mountain of concrete and steel being constructed at the end of their runway. Today, four of those pilots met with the local press to express their apprehensions. One of those pilots was Captain W.T. Bill Alford. Captain Alford, I understand that you are not particularly concerned as a pilot with perhaps running into one of these buildings, but I understand there are other hazards uh, created by them. What are some of these? Yes, if you'll think of these buildings as a coral reef, in the harbor, entry of a harbor, of an ocean-going harbor, every ship has to circumnavigate or go around an obstruction. We have the same situation with a tall building. The controllers will have an extra workload. They will have to radar vector us around the building. We will have to have uh, procedures to go around these obstructions at all times. It will definitely be a hazard to air navigation. Three proposed new high-rise structures in the downtown Dallas area disturbed the pilots, the LTV building, Griffin Square, and the main place development. If those three buildings are built, say the pilots, instrument landings on this runway, a primary runway at Love Field, will be eliminated. And that will badly curtail the use of this airport facility. This will mean Love Field's ability to land planes during the months of December and January, for example, will be virtually cut in half. The pilots will take their plea before the Dallas City Council next Monday, but not even the most optimistic believe they will get a favorable reaction. To quote one, we just want, for the record, to make it plain that in case anything happens, we told Dallas. This is Tommy Ayers reporting for Channel 8 News. But we're tired. Go to our homes this morning, this afternoon, and look at the water. Where the water has run through open toilets, the sewage along the highway. And yet when we come here, the cry is, it's not our problem. Whose problem is it? The council decided to 
uh, circulate a petition in the area, a legal petition, to see if the people had enough interest to install sanitary sewers at the partial cost of the city and partial cost to the homeowners, as is done in all er other areas of the city. very emotional. I, I um, was very upset by his writing. I can't say I'm happy. I'm, I'm, I'm happy he's alive, but I'm not happy that his writing looks the way it does and that he hasn't ever been allowed to receive a letter to know that we're all right and that we're, we're waiting for him and that we love him. And so I, I was very upset. I had waited a long time for a letter. I had been notified five weeks ago that it was coming, and the letter was written December 24, 1969. It took me four months to get it. Well, when I first heard the contents of the letter, I realized that my husband had no knowledge of Rick, our little boy, at all. He mentioned in the letter, the child, but it was obvious that he doesn't know whether it's a boy or a girl or anything about him. And it's really saddened me a great deal. Rick celebrated his fourth birthday last week, and I've written a letter to Jerry every month for the last four and a half years telling him about Rick. 